All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I am here at Fit Club with Jenny Geary. You guys have seen her before. And today is an upper body day. We have not discussed ex the exact workout. However, if I get to lead it, I'm gonna do the stuff that I like to do. I, I mean, she can lead it. I don't feel like thinking. So both of us, upper body is not a priority. Well, her. a little bit because I let myself go for three months. I didn't train upper body and I kind of missed it. I mi well, I'm back now. I'm back, bitch. <laughs> I'm not trying to put on necessarily a bunch of size. Just stay nice and tight and have put put the size, size down in the lower half but still, you know, maintain my current muscle. Uh, delts, I think, are always important. A few years ago, when I started coming here to Fit Club, I asked you, how do you build your delts? Because I always felt like my delts were like so hard to grow. What did you tell me? I overstimulate my rear delts. Back in yeah. the day when I was building them, I would hit them three days a week. So I was doing twice a week pretty consistently, and I did add a third, not a full day, but no, like extra. Yeah. yeah, just, just extra to an extra day. So almost three times, two and a half times a week. Two and a half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two and a half times. A little bit more volume on each session, and I have absolutely noticed more growth. I do think that also pushing yourself a little bit further than you think you can and also having adequate food and rest. Yeah. So seeing more growth just overall in my build season has been a game changer for me too. Yeah. So we are gonna hit this workout. We're gonna do primarily uh, delts and back and we'll show you guys what we're doing here. Follow along and don't forget to subscribe to Miss Jen's channel, follow along here. And if you guys have questions or comments, put them below. So this is a new one for me. I haven't really done pull downs since my surgery because pull downs are a little bit of pecs. You're gonna feel it in the pecs as you pull down. So I'm not gonna go heavy. I'm really just gonna really try to focus on the lats completely. I'd be interested to see if this grip, so turning your hand positioning this way, you'll maybe feel a little less pack. Well, that's really light. <laughs> that's really, <laughs> really light. I had it where it was. Okay, sorry. I okay. okay. <sighs> so right, cause you're doing more of an underhand. <clears throat> The only thing. Okay. Yeah, and then bringing it down and then it. There you go. Perfect. Jen takes the cues right away. When you're a coach and you give cues, you better be better good at taking them. Are you gonna go up on this? Yeah. The movement pattern isn't this, is it not straight this way? It's kind of down and then in. And then if you want to intensify a little bit more when you bring it in, then you pull your body up a little bit. Okay. All right, so on this exercise, we I consider the first two sets kind of more of a warm-up, just kind of feeling out the movement pattern. I don't go super heavy really try to nail that form. So like I said, this is a more technical way of doing it, but it's very targeted. When you can really get into that movement pattern, I feel it right in here. Is that what you feel? I feel it more in here. And then if you have really good posture, you're gonna also feel it a little bit in the elastic, yeah. especially if you stand up with it a little bit. So we are playing around a little bit with the handles. Not every gym will have something like this. Yeah. Probably have one of these. So this is what we're gonna use for our working sets. And you can grab it here, which is the traditional kind of grip, but I'm actually gonna grab it here. Okay, I think that's- Really close together, and it's gonna angle it a little bit. Okay. But the movement with your arms is the same. I typically am aiming for 10 to 12 reps on this. I'm gonna just fill it out and see. If I can do more, I'll do more, but that's kind of where I aim. I select the weight where I know I can do at least 10. This is right where I feel it. She's talking about feeling it here. I feel it here, and then I feel it a little bit here, but mostly right here. You're even gonna feel it a little bit in your triceps. Put your hand on my middle back. Put my hand on the middle yeah. of your back? See if you can feel my back working. Yeah, I feel that just at that last minute, but then you're feeling this all the way. And so the like all, this throughout the whole movement, and this just right at the end of the movement. Yeah. Did you change the weight? I went up one. Nice, Jen. Are you feeling anything in your chest at all? No. Good. So for the ladies out there who care about the ladies, 
Sometimes when you're getting back into weight training after breast augmentation, which Jen recently had a revision replacement. January 15th, and we're at the 22nd. Yeah, about two months ago. Getting back into it, even as an experienced lifter, you've got to give yourself time, feel things out. Sometimes you either have to modify a movement or just avoid it for a little bit longer. You will get back to full training, and there may be exercises that you just stop doing indefinitely. Unless it's a body part that you really, really, really want to focus on, there's no mandatory movements that you have to do for your whole life. Like, I don't bench press. I don't do flat bench press. I was just gonna say that. Ever. Ever. Push-ups I, mean, I don't do, not... I won't do them anymore. See, I like doing push-ups. Like, I think for women at least, doing some fine a little like, bit. Like, there's nothing, I, like, I, if I have my girls do push-ups, I have them do it more for, like, triceps. Or if you're someone without breast implants, implants you can do chest. You totally I can do. do chest if you want to, but even then, I think a lot of women don't need to do that kind of stuff unless they have, like, a specific, like, performance goal. Right. Because you will hit chest through other things as a secondary muscle. Yes. I would never have an entire chest day. No. I don't think in my lifting career I've ever had an entire chest no. day. Before my first set and then after my first set, I did a little bit of chest, but it would always be like chest and arms. Yeah. All right, let's get to the next one. Let's move on. What are we doing now? I want to do a, a row variation. So, so we can either do... We like to go back and forth. So we'll do like a pull down yeah. and then a row. Then we're going to go back to a pull down, then back to a row. So we're obviously starting with back if you didn't get the memo. <laughs> Okay, so, so what row do you want to do? My top three, I would do a bent barbell row. We can use the new machine that they have over here. Well, we should because we've never used it. The new machine. All right, well, she's got to lead the way. Machine. All right, you guys, so second exercise for today is... Oh, I'm supposed to be going. Hammer strength, low row. This is a new piece of equipment we have here at the gym at Fit Club, um, which is great. It's, a, it's not new equipment. It's just a new one that we've added to the gym here. It's been around for a long time. So this is a low row, meaning you start low and then you pull you pull up high and we're also doing a modified version not using the bench standing version this just provides just gives you a different angle i feel it a lot in here too. yep yep yeah. so i don't like using the chairs very often even when the machine is designed to use the chair you don't have to use the chair you can always stand up sit down change your feet around, try to move your body so that you can start to feel it in the area you want to work. That was something I learned going from being a beginner where you just get into the machine, just use it how it says in the photos versus saying, hey, these machines are made for a wide variety of people. And if you just modify how you stand, where you pull, your hand positioning, you might feel it a little bit differently than the next person. And everybody's limb lengths are different. So position of the chair, like, it's gonna uh, totally hit differently. Previous for injuries or could have slept funny. So this is sort of playing around with it. We're gonna do uh, three sets here. What'd you do, like 12? I, I wasn't 12. even counting and I'm pretty sure one, one arm did more probably than about, the other one. Uh, probably about 10 to 12 reps here, three sets. A little bit. Uh, your traps at all more? No. I try to keep my shoulders down and back whenever I'm doing that. I could feel them, but I'm trying to keep them not activated. Fuck, I don't know how many that was. Are we gonna go up or do you wanna keep it the same? I think it's a good weight for me. Yeah, that's a good weight. All right, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna think like I'm doing a dumbbell row. So you put the opposite leg forward. I feel it more if I have the same leg back. Let's just get these shorts out of my area. I can't stand. How she never makes noise. <laughs> Acting all easy. I think I screamed yesterday in my workout. And, it doesn't and count. You never scream when you're with Andy me. He said he said he thought that he was with Jen for a minute.
All right, what are we doing next, coach? Resting. So now we gotta do a lap pull down. <laughs> yeah. Close grip. Or even just like a neutral here. Okay. Let's do the two handles, the green handles. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Don't fuck it up. Let's... Don't fuck it up and put it on wrong. Is this right? You fucked it up. So if you notice, with all of these exercises, we're getting a big stretch and then pull and squeeze. Do, try not to use too much momentum and then a really slow negative. Nice big stretch. Third exercise is going to be a lap pull down. In this variation of a lap pull down, we are using these the dual pulley system, and we have these again fun attachments. If you were at a gym that didn't have attachments like this, you could use the regular. This is obviously still not regular. This is like oversized, but something that looks like this. Or if you just have a traditional single pulley, you could still just do a straight bar and then hold it a little closer. One of the benefits of this exercise is. With a couple. You can do single arm at a time, like Jen's doing right now. With this sort of um, attachment, you also can sort of move more naturally with your specific anatomy. So if it feels better for you to have the hand turn like this, or like this, or like this, right? It might feel better depending if you've had an injury in the past or any sort of mobility <sighs> issues. So these have a lot of benefits to them for, from that perspective. Jen just got worked. My hand, my Tyrannosaurus hands. Okay, so we're doing three sets here, about 10 reps per side, single arm. Doing I, single arm I now. did 10, 12. I'm gonna do both arms at the same time. And again, we're keeping the hands close to the body. If you're a woman who, like we mentioned earlier, has had breast augmentation either in the past or recently, doing movements where you're keeping the arms closer to the body, even for back work, is a lot safer. You don't risk potentially having separation here, and you'll get very similar results. You don't yeah. necessarily need to go super wide. Unless you're looking to get a big wide back, unless they're a bodybuilder, and then they probably don't have implants or whatnot. We're rolling. That was Brad, the camera guy's way of telling us to shut up. He's like, quit talking, bitches. So fourth exercise, and this will be our final back exercise for this movement, or the, for this workout. Body part, because then we're going over to shoulders. <laughs> fourth and final exercise for this part of the workout, for the back <laughs> portion of this workout, we are doing bent over barbell row, and we're going to be doing them also modified. So a lot of times you see people when they do bent over. Why are we doing the modified? I'll explain to this oh. right now. Oh, that's the so, shut up too, Jen. <laughs> So a lot of times people are more um, angled like this. And if you guys watched my, my video that I did, I think it was like last summer with uh, Jared Feather, I was telling him I was really trying to isolate my mid back and I, had, I felt like I couldn't feel that area ever, no matter what I did. So we practiced doing these bent over rows by being fully parallel to the ground. So pendulum so rows is what they're called. Completely bent over. I'm, I'm not gonna move from this position though. It's just gonna be right here. Okay, so then that means, I do these with some of my guys that are like really tall. Yeah. So when you're really tall, it, you won't be able to get parallel to the ground. You're gonna have to put plates on the ground. Yeah. I might have to do that just because okay. of my back. These... I mean, you can do the modified. If you have any back issue or you feel pain, you should always stop. Don't continue doing the movement. Try to modify as best as you can so that you don't feel your back. A lot of times with clients who do have chronic back pain, I wouldn't even have them do a bent over row. I would have them do a chest supported row or seated row using a machine. There's no exercise you have to do. There's always a workaround. My clients were, it wasn't dealing with back pain. It was just how tall he is. Yeah. So him being parallel to the yeah, ground, you have to have over. some. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the bar. Okay. Um, I think so we're not doing dead stop. 
Okay, so then we don't need anything on the ground if we're not doing dead stop. It's so isolating though that you don't really go heavy. Okay. Like I can do 135 on these, but I'm sure you can do much more. Ever since I did these with Jared last summer, it was like a game changer for me because I just had to slow it down and really focus on the muscle that I'm working and not so much like pulling the weights, right? So it's super isolated. So she's using wrist wraps because she's going real heavy today. Right. <laughs> so this is about 50% heavier than our warm-up set. It's a pretty significant amount of weight. Adding on, uh, one thing I think that's really important to note is that I mentioned earlier that this modification is something that I worked on with another athlete to fine tune how I do things. And I know Jen, you've trained with a lot of people over the years. It's always so great. I know a lot of people watching this, you might train at home and be trained by yourself, but there's so much value, I think, in getting around other people who lift, who have a lot of experience, because you will learn things that you may never learn on your own. It would take you a decade to figure out trying to like dissect things, but you have a different set of experiences working with different coaches and different athletes over the years. So do I. Yeah, I've had like five different coaches in yeah. my time. John Meadows, one of them. Part of the reason why I do what I do when I invite people onto my channel, like we do this because and share with our channels mm -hmm. because we have a lot to give to you guys. And then you guys have requests to have us together and we have fun and all that other stuff. But whenever I bring somebody on my channel, I usually have them lead the workout because I want to give you guys another way of doing things. Yeah. Because my way, there's not one way that works. Yeah. So there's multiple different ways to do Yeah, things. you can get so much knowledge. And a lot of this stuff is like street knowledge, yeah. right? A lot of the gym stuff is not necessarily studied or put into textbooks that would, that would be extremely uh, expensive to do that kind of stuff. And no one's really documenting any of it. So a lot of it is like word of mouth that's passed from gym to gym to gym, where people are learning from those who have kind of experimented and done these things and put it into practice and training with different athletes over the years. So, so if like you work with one athlete, that's your experience with them, but you're yeah. actually getting their experience from the 10 different people that they've worked with. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and some of this stuff is even by accident. Yeah. Oh shit, when I did that exercise, I felt it here. Boom, now I'm gonna play around with that. You know, you wanna get as much knowledge as you can, but just having that time with another athlete or studying from somebody else, you're good. Ooh, I like these first drops. Amazon, people. The link below. Hold on, I'm getting set up. Oh my God, it just took two, three weeks of training my upper body to get back what I lost in three months. So happy. Oh God, I forgot it was only 10 pounds. <laughs> And bring it up to your chest. A bit more at the bottom. Beautiful. I feel like my hands need to be wider next time. I felt the same thing when I was doing mine. Oh, it sucks. All right, are we going up? Yeah, we'll go up. My hands need to bit. be way wider. I forgot that I was doing a high row. I did the same thing on the second set. One of the things with this, back is parallel to the floor. You're bringing the bar to your, basically your nipple line, right to the chest. And so driving the elbows up to the ceiling. And then the other part of it, to get as much length as possible, as much range of motion, you want to slowly on the bottom, take your time, really extend the arms downwards towards the floor and get a good stretch. So Which is what we talked about earlier, like getting a good stretch with everything and then a hard contraction. What are we doing? Going up by five? five. Adele, laterals, rear delts. Okay. So we'll do them on the reverse pec deck. Then we'll do laterals either on the machine or with dumbbells. I like doing it on the machine. And then do you want to end with my lat the rear delts that I do on the row machine with the cable? Okay. I mean, I like Let's get to it. All right. Reverse pec. Okay.
We're gonna do 12 to 15 here. What's really important with this one, keep your head down. Little secret, when you keep your head down, you keep your traps out of it. And you don't have to go all the way back. Then you're gonna fire your back muscles and your trap muscles, whether your neck is down or not. So you really only have to go back until you feel that rear delt contraction. I don't even have any tension on it, and I'm flexing my rear delts right now. So just as long as you get feel that contraction, and then open, and then slow release. Sometimes I like to do these with a drop set, but I already did shoulders as the beginning part of my workout on Monday. So I'm not gonna do a drop set. Jesus Christ, how many have you done? 18? Sorry, LL Cool J's on. I had to. I had to twerk. I had to twerk. Dude, how many did you just do? Probably like 20. I guess I am doing a drop set. This. Hold on, one more. This. Drop it. Oh God, okay, I'm done. Ah, she didn't even move it, why? I just took it out and put it right back in. I think it's official, my shoulders are back. They went on vacation. But, okay, so what we're doing now is we are gonna end with rear delts again, even though we did a lot of them, but I like to overstimulate. So, we're on this piece of equipment. She's doing lateral raises. So, a few little cues. So, these are some of the things that I tell my clients to think, whether they have dumbbells or they're on a piece of equipment like this. You wanna think that you're a puppet and you're lifting from the elbows. Okay, so there are different ranges of motion. You could stop here, you can go all the way up, but at the end of the day, you're lifting here. It doesn't matter what's in your hand, if anything. So with this, I don't even hold on. So I just have my arms free, but I'm leading with the elbow and my hands are pointing down, like, like they say, pouring like a teapot. And that's gonna be all medial delt. Yeah. I win. I like doing it on this machine, and then there's a couple things that I like to do. So you wanna go really close, because if you're too far away, it's gonna hit the top. But one thing that I like to do is because these move. So you grab onto the opposite, you don't use the handles, and then you make sure that these don't slide and don't open up. So you're keeping constant tension. You pull open, and the weight doesn't have to be heavy, and then you come together, but if you lose tension, they're gonna open, okay? So I am keeping them taut and tight. So open, squeeze, slow, come together. Open, squeeze. I can some, will sometimes feel this more, ooh, it just moved, it's because I'm talking, more than I feel the reverse pec deck. And the weight is freaking five pounds. Ugh. Oh my God, my delts are fried. Striations here. Ah! Look, at that, look at that. This is like warm. Ah! Ah! Okay, I'm done. It might've been like eight. Oh God, they burn. I did get this question in my last shoulder workout. Basically, if they didn't have that piece of equipment. This one? Lateral raises with bent elbow. So if you don't have that equipment in your gym, what can you do instead? You could use a tube and you could actually put your hand through the handles. If you had a long band, so this I do with some of my people, this is way too tight. So there's no way that I'm going. <sighs> did you get that on camera? Delete it. <sighs> so this is too tight, but I would sit here and then put it on. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not too tight. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's not. You can even seated or standing yeah. like that. Just so, put your foot through and then you kind of just do yep. this motion. Make sure you take that trip out. <sighs> One of the benefits to having um, the, the bent elbow is that you can go heavier. And just because of the, t the, the fat and the... We're a messed up right now because we're at the end of the workout. So brain cells are almost all the way gone. So same thing here. If you don't have this sort of cable system at your gym, you could always use like a band, loop it around something, 
and, and be able to pull open this way would be on variation or even um, chest supported angled on a bench and you can use dumbbells to get a similar movement pattern. Nothing really replaces cables. That's why they're so great. Yeah. You get that constant tension, but bands would be the closest thing. The difference between a band, dumbbells, so working against gravity with dumbbells. So when you get down to the bottom, the tension is like still the same. Here you're getting the same amount of tension throughout the whole range of motion. And then when you're with a band, it's gonna get harder here and lighter here. And you actually really wanna keep the same tension in the stretch position, because that's where you build more lean muscle tissue is when you're putting load under the stretch position. See striations. Ow. Why does it feel easier now? You warmed up, maybe? Yeah, I was warm before. Do you want me to add weight? Maybe because I was talking. Ah, you piece of shit. Ah! <laughs> Don't do it! Touch it! Get off of it! <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Ah, my foot was cramping. I don't know why I wasn't using it. Last set. Last set, best set. This set doesn't feel lighter. Right? I know, right? Uh, Look, let's get this in the fucking film. Are you doing, uh, Brad, are you fucking filming? Wait, what are you doing? I don't your know. What are you doing oh, I was doing this. Are we filming? Uh, oh, he's filming the whole time. All right, let's talk to them. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm ready to eat. I, I got so hungry after that second set, I didn't even tell you. What second set? The second set of the- Of the first exercise. I was starving. I'm the starving. second set of the first back exercise? Yes. Like that was like two hours I ago. I lost three pounds. And so I did my leg workout yesterday with Andy and every single time after my leg session, I'm down three pounds. Oh. I wake up in the middle of the night hungry and- So you need to eat more food. Yeah. Yum yum. You tell him that. Hashtag yum yum. Andy, she needs more food. But, oh, we have to switch meal plans. I'm on 5,000 calories now, 4,900. My high day was 3,000. Should we switch? Are we gonna, I, I will die. I mean, I think I could do it for a day. I think I, I will really die. Do. I mean, I know I can do you it. 5,000 calories, drop it in the comments. Let us know how much you think you could eat in a day. All day long, multiple meals. For a week? I would is say- Every day? No, so 5,000 is three days a week and then, well, 4,900, and then 4,700, two days a week, and then 4,500, two days a week. Okay, so that's pretty similar though. So, and you have to do it in not like one meal, because I think anybody could probably eat like are you burgers in 5,000, yeah. This is total sidebar from this workout. If you are somebody who's trying to build muscle. And, and you're not hungry, or, like full all the time, then you're yeah. not building. Yeah. A lot of people want to recomp. They do, a lot of women, they don't want to gain weight. They want to lose fat and build muscle at the same time. There's a very small population of people who can do that. Maybe if you're a beginner and it's your first go at it, you can lose body fat and build muscle at roughly the same pace at the same time. But eventually that window of opportunity goes away. And if you're more experienced, more intermediate level, you will have to either commit to a dieting phase or commit to a build phase. Meaning if you want to put on muscle, you've got to be eating more food, not just one day a week, but every single day you need to be in a surplus. And it is tough. Is 5,000 calories hard for you? Yeah, I mean, every day is hard for me. Really? Yeah. Little tip there, you got to get your nutrition on point. Otherwise, all of these workouts, you're sort of shooting yourself in the foot, right? You need the proper fuel to be able to bring the proper intensity to the gym to get stronger, have progressive overload, get better every single week, and then build lean muscle tissue. Yeah, with the more muscle tissue you have on the body, you have faster metabolism, so then you are gonna burn more fat at rest. So they kind of go a little bit hand in hand, but yes, she's right. You can't be in too much of a deficit or if you're trying to build, because then you're not gonna have any energy for your workouts. And if you're not truly capitalizing on your workout, it's a science yeah. and you have to have it all. You can't be half pregnant. Yeah, I never you're heard not, that one before. You That's are new. or you're not, right? So if you're building, you gotta be in a surplus. You can't kinda <laughs> be in a surplus, it doesn't exist. Right, you can't That's be half pregnant. 
can't you can't be kind of pregnant. <laughs> I have another analogy that an actual IT guy gave me a long time ago. And when I worked in corporate, we were working on a project, a web a web development project, very e-commerce website sort of thing. If you guys don't know that about me, I used to work in marketing for many years. And this client wanted this project done faster. Well, can't you put more people on the project? And our CTO said to the guy, you can't put nine women in a room and get a baby in a month. <laughs> okay. Because there is a sequence of things that have to happen in order. I in get order it. That to happen, right? Yeah. So you need the time. Some things take the time. Building muscle is very similar. You need to be uh, stacking on weight training, progressive overload, adding the, the food consistently for months. Can't do more workouts to build more muscle. There, there is a, a bell curve to this thing, right? And then Even rest. You have diminishing returns. And then rest, recovery, all of those things are factors as well. Exactly right. So leave your comments below. Uh, like, subscribe, to share. Yes. Subscribe to this girl's channel. And this girl's. Let us know what you guys want to see next. Should we do another upper body workout, lower body workout? Do you want to see a day of eating? Should we switch food? Let us know. And we'll see you guys next time.